OpenAI just launched two major new models. There's now O3 and O4 Mini. So these are their smartest, most capable models yet. And what sets them apart isn't that they're just better at math and coding and writing. It's that they can also now reason about when and how to use tools inside ChatGPT. So these things come out of the box, ready to search the web, run code, analyze images, generate visuals, all of this starting to be chained together without you needing to necessarily you know, select a bunch of different tools or prompt every single feature or functionality. So O3 is setting new records across academic benchmarks and real world tasks. O4 Mini offers lightning fast, affordable reasoning, which is ideal for high volume work. And both models can think with images, not just about them. So there's a whole new level of multimodal problem solving. And right now you can access up to 100 messages a week with O3 and 300 a day with O4 Mini if you have a ChatGPT Plus team or enterprise account. According to OpenAI, pro users have, quote, near unlimited access to these models at the moment. Now, what's really interesting here, Paul, is that O3 in particular is making some serious waves due to just how intelligent this thing seems. There are some prominent voices out there, including the popular economist Tyler Cowen, who have said straight up they believe this model is essentially artificial general intelligence or AGI. So, Paul, I know you and I have both been really impressed with O3. Maybe walk me through your initial impressions, maybe give me a sense of what you think about all this commentary about it being actual AGI. There's definitely been lots of the AGI um, context. I think a lot of people starting to wonder if we're not you know, really on this accelerated path to it and if this isn't kind of an early preview because I think O3 Pro is going to come out soon as well. Yeah. Like I think, yeah. yeah, so there, there's a more powerful version coming. Um, I've also seen quite a few reports that hallucin hallucination rates are higher with O3. So just sort of a, a, a you know, a, a, a user warning. Mm -hmm. It seems super impressive and it really is. But again, if you're depending on this thing for work that you're going to turn in for things that you're going to put out into the public, you have to be very vigilant on the accuracy and reliability of the outputs. So just kind of a, a note there. A um, couple of people that surfaced for me when I was looking at reactions here, Alexander Wang, who we've talked about numerous times on the podcast, the CEO at Scale AI, which is a company that works with all these big model companies to do the training, um, you know, provide the data, things like that um, for the training. So he said, OpenAI 03 is a genuine, meaningful step forward for the industry, emergent agent, agentic tool use working seamlessly via scaling reinforcement learning is a big breakthrough. It is genuinely incredible how consistently OpenAI delivers new miracles. Um, and then Bob McGrew, who's the former chief research officer at OpenAI, tweeted that the defining question for AGI isn't, quote, how smart is it? But, quote, what fraction of economically valuable work can it do? The spotlight for O3 is on tool use because intelligence is no longer the primary constraint. The new frontier is reliable interaction with the external world. So just a reminder, like, you know, as we talk about AGI and, you know, again, people who follow the show know we have an entire new series dedicated to pers like kind of following this road to AGI and beyond. Um, I think it's really important that people continue to remember we don't need to reach it or agree on it that we have reached it for it to transform everything. So just using O3 myself over the last week, um, you really start to increasingly see it doing the things that I would otherwise be paying advisors and consultants to do or the things that we would traditionally be hiring someone to do. So as an example, while I was in Aruba, um, we had to make a kind of a relatively quick decision on internet for the office. So we you know, have internet in the office. Um, we need to upgrade it. It is not my area of expertise. It's not something as the CEO of the company I've even had to think about for like five years because we did this before and it's been working fine. But as we're scaling up our company, we have to rethink how we're handling the internet, make it more reliable, more stable, things like that. So we get a quote from a vendor, um, Tracy, our COO sends it to me. She and I go back and forth. I've got questions. She's got questions. Neither of us are experts in this field. 
So I was like, screw it. Like, I'm just going to go into O3 and like, let's just have this conversation. Hey, you're a senior IT advisor. We're trying to solve for this problem. And it analyzed things in ways like I've been paying IT people for 25 years running my companies. It helped me understand more deeply how to solve this than any IT person I've ever talked to. <laughs> and I was able to just like continue to say, I don't understand this. Can you explain this for me better? Can you give me examples of why I would care that this is the difference? And so rather than like me reaching out to my IT person and then waiting five hours for a response that I might not understand, in the moment when I had 20 minutes, I just did it myself. I just solved the thing. And so you start to realize, like, I don't necessarily have to have deep expertise here. I know enough, having managed my internet as a CEO for 20 years, what I need and don't need. I just needed some guidance and like some some frameworks to help me make a decision. So in a matter of about 20 minutes talking to O3, I made a decision, replied to Trace. I was like, OK, let's go. And here's what we're going to do. And then I shared that chat with Tracy so she could also see the context of why we were making that decision. And then mm -hmm. she could continue on and see if she had any other questions as well. So that is a prime example of something I would have absolutely paid an advisor for. Same time, I'm working on this massive organizational design strategy for our company, because again, as we're kind of scaling up and new complexities around size of the staff, compensation models, all these challenges that we haven't had to really face. And even when I was running my agency, we peaked at like 20 employees or something. So I never had to design an organization that could scale to a hundred plus employees, which is what I'm now having to kind of like envision is like, okay, we have to make decisions now that can get us to stable uh, growth from like 50 to hundred employees if we choose to go that route. But now I'm, I'm out of my league. Like this isn't what I've done. I haven't run a company with a hundred plus people. So Again, I could pay and probably fifty to a hundred thousand dollars for the specific thing that I was looking to do, or I could do it myself with O3, which is what I did. And what I realized in the process of doing this over a few days on vacation was rather than paying someone to give me a report and say, here's what you should do, that I would then have to sit there for hours reviewing analyzing, trying to make sure I understood the recommendations so that I could then make an educated decision. I just did all the work myself with O3. Now I, I you know, I kind of knew the prompts to give it, like the questions to ask, but the, the main value of the project became my ability to critically question the outputs of the model. Be like, well, why are you saying that? Like, where are you getting this data from? And it would show me the citations. It's like, so it became this like immersive experience to where I am going to have a much greater confidence level in the final output because I was bought into the process and I was able to ask all my questions along the way in real time. And so it really just starts to change the way I think about how we do knowledge work. And we talk about this, Mike, a lot on the show, but like these are very practical examples where I just saved myself probably a hundred plus hours of time and work mm. and probably a hundred thousand dollars in expenses. And I actually feel better about the end product, which by the way, the other thing I'm going to do is take that end product before I operationalize it. And I'm going to use other models as critics to evaluate what mm. I ended up at working with O3. So I'll take the final output, I'll put it into Gemini 2.5 and say, just basically start from scratch. Hey, here is the organizational structure I'm looking at. Here's the decisions I've made. Please assess this for me. You know, please criticize or, or look critically at different areas and challenge these decisions. And now I'm not just dependent upon a single model that might be hallucinating. I can actually vet it against one or two additional models that maybe take a different perspective. And again, I end up at the, you know, a place where I'm just more confident in the final product. So it, I don't know, Mike, like it, it just changes things. And I, I know you and I talk about this all the time, but like when you know this stuff, like when you can do what I just explained, when you start to look at problems in your business differently, because you know, AI can help you do it you can run a business in a, or a department or a team or a campaign in entirely different ways when you know how to work with these tools. It, it, it really is like hard to comprehend if you're not actively doing it, but it's so transformative. Yeah, and I would also say too, I'm <clears throat> certainly biased here, but this alone justifies the cost of 200 bucks a month, having Easy. unlimited access to it. I mean, you just described. I just saved $5,000 in my IT X, bill. You know? Yeah. <laughs> One and, project. I could write it up. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. And I also would just to kind of wrap up here, be really blunt, honestly, and say if you are a professional services provider, like a lawyer, an accountant, an IT consultant, what have you, you need to run and not walk to go spend $200 or you can get in a plus account in limited usage and put this thing through the paces of the hard questions clients ask you because I would be really starting to think about how do I become the guy that they then go hire after they've done this initial thing themselves. 100%. Every, every time, if you're a service provider, every time you put a proposal together, you need to be asking yourself, can O3 do this? Like I'm about to send a proposal to somebody for 10,000, 20,000, 100,000, a million dollars, whatever it is. Hmm. If this is an AI emergent business like ours would be, could they just use O3 to do this or 80% of this? Because the answer is going to increasingly be yes, as we get to a higher level of awareness and AI literacy for leaders at these companies. Right now, it's still early and we're still very much in kind of the early adopter innovators phase where very small percentages of companies and leaders are aware they can do this in place of hiring you, but it's going to change pretty quickly.